Hello and welcome. This is All You Need to Know. I am Agam Akhil. Let's start off by taking a look at the global markets. At this point in time, we have mixed queues coming through. Well, mixed queues for American markets, essentially, where we've seen marginal moves on either side of the line. But uh, and it's the same for the, the European indices, though European indices have moved a little more than the American markets. Uh, well, that's had a bearing to a certain extent on the Asian markets. But uh, we have seen gains coming in for the Hang Seng, which has advanced by around 1.3%. So same for the CSI 300. On the other hand, Nikkei down, well, four tenths of a percent. But, and what does it mean for the SJX Nifty? While we did see the SJX Nifty start off in a considerably weaker note, it has recovered and at this point in time it's largely flattish at a little over 10,300. When it comes to trade in our own markets last Friday, what we saw was substantial weakness on the benchmark indices with the Nifty declining by around 1.4% and the mid cap and the small cap indices moving in tandem with the Nifty. It was the case when it comes to the Nifty banking index which also declined by around 4 tenths of a percent. Uh, them, but among the few sectoral indices which did close in the green, marginally in the green, was the Nifty PSU banking index. And along with that, we had the Nifty FMCG index advance by around eight tenths of a percent. Not to speak for something like the Nifty IT index, which declined by as much as 3.2 percent. Now, that said, when it comes to ADRs and how Indian stocks have performed in world markets abroad, we have advances for Vedanta, ICICI Bank, Dr. Reddy's, Wipro, along with several other counters which have advanced in trade. But when it comes to foreign institutional flows, we saw an outgo of around 618 crores. When it comes to DIIs, however, the gross numbers and the, sales, uh, the gross buy and sell numbers were largely matching, which is why we really didn't have too much of a movement there. But that said, when it comes to the day of trade last Friday, it was essentially Reliance Industries and HTFC Limited bearing down on the indices and providing the bulk of the losses for the Nifty 50. And not too much to speak for on the gainer end, though uh, the likes of Kotak Mahindra Bank, ITC and Sun Pharma did what they, whatever they could to lend whatever little support to the Nifty. But going in, when it comes to the futures and options space, we saw more unwinding coming through in the futures, where they declined around 4%. And uh, on the other hand, more shorts building in as far as the Nifty banking futures are concerned, considering a 16% increase in open interest. Now, when it comes to your open interest distribution as a whole, what we've also seen is the open interest, the max OI in your calls coming from the level of 11,000 call now to around 10,600, as you can see on your screen here. On the other hand, max OI continuing to be with the 10,000 put. So that's the range that we're looking at. Of course, uh, on, on that particular day, we did see a lot of activity around the 10,400, 10,500 calls where we saw more writing coming through, unwinding in those respective puts. But uh, moving on, when it comes to the India Volatility Index, that rose by around 10% at nearing inching towards the mark of 20. The Nifty Put Call Ratio fell uh, to a neutral level of around 1.07. The Nifty Banking Index Put Call Ratio, on the other hand, rose to around 0 0.79. And among other stocks that we are watching out for, Repco Home Finance bearing the brand, further declining by around 8% shorts there. We are also seeing shorts in something like a mine tree, declining by around 17% on the back of well earnings, which were largely in line, but valuations catching up and uh, more shots in something like an RBL bank. But uh, Jet Airways was one stock which was bucking the trend. Uh, it advanced by 6%, so we saw short covering. But the question remains whether or not there will be some respite in today's day of trade. But with that, let's now grow across to Paul Allen for the top international headlines. There's widespread skepticism after Saudi Arabia admitted that writer Jamal Khashoggi was in fact killed at the kingdom's consulate in Istanbul. President Trump initially said the explanation was credible, but US lawmakers say the killing came from the highest levels of the Saudi regime. Turkish newspaper Habertürk says President Erdogan will release details of an investigation into Khashoggi's killing on Tuesday. President Trump says he's considering a new middle income tax cut before the midterm elections in a move aimed at boosting Republican chances of holding their majorities on Capitol Hill. However, GOP tax policy figures know nothing about it. The president said House Republicans, including Speaker Paul Ryan, are already working on the plan, but sources in Congress tell us there's no sign of such a drive. 
Italy's populist government has approved its contentious budget, but says it will continue to discuss the issue with the European Union. Premier Giuseppe Conte said the spending plan was approved by all members of the coalition government and brushed aside a ratings downgrade. The budget breaches EU rules by foreseeing a higher than expected deficit. Italy has until noon Rome time to respond. The Australian government says it intends to see out a full term despite looking set to lose a Sydney by-election and its majority in Parliament. Prime Minister Scott Morrison insists there's still a chance the Liberals can win the Wentworth seat as postal votes narrow the result. It may be several days before the final tally is known, but Morrison had earlier effectively conceded, saying the government was paying the price for internal strife. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. Uh, President Trump is uh, saying that while he sees this as, dis in an interview, said he sees this as deception and lies, yet at the same time he said the crown prince is a strong person and he is apt to have, think that he has no involvement in Mr. Khashoggi's death. Uh, Germany is saying that it is going to uh, put its arms sales to uh, the Saudi regime on hold uh, while more is known, or more comes out about this. France said it is looking for more information. And Congress is pressuring uh, the administration and President Trump to react uh, and, and to look at possible um, ways to uh, uh, change the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia, including arms sales, which the president has reiterated that he is very reluctant to give up. And he came up with this as surprise to uh, uh, many people, including people in Congress, saying they didn't know about this. Uh, but it looks like he is trying to have some tough talk on, on Russia, and uh, he's doing it through this arms deal, uh, this, this arms treaty uh, deal. This concerns uh, other U.S. allies, including Germany uh, and others, that think uh, it would be a bad move to pull out of this deal, especially given that we're not hearing anything else that would replace it. Uh, this could be President Trump, he's done this in the past where he has tough talk about something and then walks it back. Everything he's saying right now must be taken in the, uh, really in the context with those midterm elections coming up in just two weeks. Much of what he's doing is trying to get uh, Republican and his base to turn out in those elections. Crude oil prices after slipping uh, following the U.S. inventory data uh, bounced back on Friday after uh, by almost uh, seven-tenth of a percent to cut the weekly losses to 3.1 percent on the uh, New York Stock Exchange on speculation that Saudi Arabia's admission to the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi uh, in the country's consulate in Istanbul will likely uh, strain the kingdom's relationship with the United States. Uh, on, the, on the base metal side, zinc uh, posted its biggest weekly drop in in, uh, since 1990. Uh, aluminum closed lower for a third consecutive day, while nickel uh, snapped its seven-day losing streak. On the precious metal front, gold and silver prices posted their longest winning streak uh, since mid-2016 as investors uh, look at other safe ha havens following the turmoil in equity markets. Well, amongst the stocks that we're tracking in trade today includes a couple of companies which reported earnings after market hours since Friday. Uh, one is ICICI Lombard, where the gross premium income grew by about 12% and the net profit growth was much stronger at 43%. Next on the list is SBI Life Insurance Company. A uh, good set of numbers. While the net premium income grew by about 42%, the net profit growth was restricted to 11%. But if you look at the persistency ratios, uh, the 61st month persistency ratio improved by uh, about 400 basis points to 55%. ICICI Securities is next on the list. Uh, reported muted set of numbers. Revenue growth was about 0.5%. Uh, EBIT growth was 2%. And the net profit growth also came in at about 2%. 0.4%. Uh, we also saw a disappointing set of numbers from Bansali Engineering Polymers, where the revenue growth was uh, very uh, strong at 41%, but uh, EBITDA was down about 27%. EBITDA margins also uh, took a sizable uh, knock down 10 percentage points to 35%, while uh, net profit, however, the growth came in uh, at um, 
about uh, 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 17 crores, so that also fell by about 33 percent, uh, largely impacted by a forex loss of 11 crores and also higher raw material costs. Persistent systems is next, reported uh, broadly in line sort of numbers. Sequentially, revenue growth uh, came in at 0.2 percent, EBIT growth came in at 3.7 percent, and net profit growth came in at about uh, 1 percent higher at 88 crores. Uh, Bulgaria Industries is next, very good set of numbers, revenue growth of 35 percent, EBITDA growth of 86 percent accompanied by expansion in EBITDA margins and net profit uh, more than doubled to 28 crores on a lower base that was aided by a lower depreciation finance costs and overall operational efficiency. That apart, we are also tracking Reliance Power, positive development for the company. The company has said that its 100% um, subsidiary, that is Sassan Power, has won an arbitration uh, award against NACC uh, because of which now they will have to pay only 17 crores towards outstanding invoices uh, versus NACC's claims of 235 crores. You also have SH Kelkar, which has said that uh, they have taken a price hike to partially offset the high raw material cost. So that's another company to watch out for. Uh, we also have two interesting bulk deals. One is India Bulls Housing Finance, where foreign fund William Blair EM Fund has sold 24.8 lakh shares uh, in trade on Friday. That's shares worth about 171 crores. Uh, additionally, there's also a report in ET which says that India Bulls Housing Finance may sell all or part of its 18.7% stake in Oak. North Bank. And finally, you have Sudarshan Chemicals, where Akash Bansali has picked up 55 uh, lakh shares uh, from DIC, who was the seller. So, see some uh, positive cue for Sudarshan Chemicals. Asian Paints will be announcing their second quarter earnings later in the day, and it is expected to be a muted quarter for the paint maker. Let's, let's take a look at what the headline numbers look like. Uh, the revenues are expected to grow by about 12%, coming in at about 4,772 crore rupees. That is expected to be on the back of a volume growth of 8 to 10%, according to the brokerages. Any number in excess of that, that would be viewed as a positive by the street. EBITDA is expected to grow by about 12.5% to to come in at about 903 crores. Margins are largely going to be flat on a year-on-year -year basis, coming in at about 18.9% on, 18 uh, on the back of increasing raw material prices. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. And net profit, too, is expected to be flat, coming in at about 578 crore rupees. And now, raw material prices, they have been consistently going up over the last six months. Crude oil prices, they are at multi-year high, and that apart, titanium dioxide and other monomer prices, they too have inched up in 2018, which is likely to put pressure on their gross margins. Now, this, coupled with a depreciating rupee, would put uh, a severe impact, and with the postponement of the festive season, uh, that would have a negative bearing, so we would be watching out for all these factors, but that apart, uh, uh, well, the performance of their, uh, of their kitchen and home improvement segment, which is the SSN League, that would be something that the street would also be watching out for, and the management commentary in terms of the outlook uh, going forward. Thanks, Ash. We're also watching out uh, for how HDFC Bank reacts. Uh, they reported more or less in-line set of numbers with the net profit growth coming in at 20.6%. In fact, not just that, but even the net interest income and operating profit growth uh, came back to those 20% plus sort of levels. Uh, cost to income ratio for the quarter came in at a historic low of 39.9%. Uh, this uh, sub 40% number was on account of the bank's digital initiatives. And not just that, but the management also said that there was potential potential for further improvement in the um, uh, cost ratio over the next two to three years. Loan growth, on the other hand, gained momentum, came in at about 24 percent. That's uh, more than double the industry average growth. Uh, domestic and corporate both saw a strong 20 percent plus growth, but the growth in the corporate book outpaced that in the retail uh, domestic book. On the asset quality, uh, the numbers were steady. The gross NPA remained unchanged at 1.33 percent. A slippages ratio came down from 2.2 percent in the June quarter to 1.8%. Uh, the management said that they see no major concerns on the NBFC exposure. They also did not disclose the exposure that they have to ILNFS, uh, but in the con call did sound confident about the corporate loan portfolio. Uh, the only concern remains the Agri portfolio, where the bank remains a little cautious on the, bank of those, uh, on the back of those farm loan waivers. So in the back of the numbers, brokerages are largely positive on HDFC Bank because they believe it is uh, 
best place to benefit from the slack in competition. So Edelweiss has maintained its uh, buy rating on the stock with a target price of 2454. Uh, they've said that uh, the bank will gain from both market churn as well as rising pricing power and that will improve visibility on the uninterrupted 20 plus percent sort of earnings growth that the bank has been seeing. You have JP Morgan which has maintained overweight and a target price of 2400. Uh, they've said that the bank continues to gain market share both on the asset as well as deposit side uh, that with minimum volatility in earnings and consistently robust asset quality. Morgan Stanley has also remained overweight and maintained a target price of 2550. Uh, they say that it's the strong balance sheet, high loan growth, continued operating leverage and inexpensive valuations uh, which are driving their positive view on the bank. And finally, your Prabhudas Lidadar which has retained a buy but cut their target price to 2310. Uh, nevertheless, they've said that they believe the risk to the asset quality are limited and they're positive on the bank on the back of consistent earnings delivery of 20 plus and uh, CGR earnings, uh, steady liability franchise and strong capital positions. So overall positive view in line set of numbers. On the big brokerage calls for the first free harvest, Nomura on Altot XM. And now the brokerage has maintained its buy rating on the stock with a target price of close to 5,150, which suggests a potential upside of nearly 43%. According to the brokerage, the mess on the Q2 numbers were driven by lower volumes and higher costs. Now, volume growth was weak on account of shutdown at sh several units, while costs were higher due to weaker rupee, higher diesel consumption, and higher other costs. Now, however, the management still believes that going forward, the rabbit upper turn would rise as it is expecting the price to uh, hike in the third quarter of financial year 2019 while it is expecting the power and fuel cost to fall going forward. Lastly, according to the brokerage, Ultratech is best placed to benefit from the upturn in the Siemens cycle that has al already begun. Second, we have is Morgan Stanley and emphasis. Now, the brokerage has maintained its overweight rating on the stock with a target price of 1,185. Now, according to the brokerage, the macro environment for spending remains robust as the company is seeing good traction across its key business verticals. Now, the company has kept the FI19 margin band unchanged even with currency tailwinds as the company is fully hedged at the older rates. Lastly, the company management also indicated that it will be able to sustain maintain growth in its direct core business going forward. into uh, providing uh, livelihood to women. None of them are educated, but they are all skilled right now. They make reprocessing uh, soaps. The process is uh, all these soaps that we collect from five-star and four-star hotels. Uh, all these hotels have a lot of uh, waste soaps, pre-used soaps, which just goes to the landfill. So once these soaps are collected, we wash the soaps uh, with chlorine water so that all the germs, dirt, whatever is there on the soaps are all wiped off. Once that is done, we scrape the soap. Once uh, it has been grated, we uh, compact the soaps into 400 grams of uh, big bars. These bars are then cut into small eight pieces of bars. bars distributed to uh, children from schools, orphanages, different institutions. So we have our uh, hygiene angels, uh, Swachh Paris that we call. These are part-time girls who go to schools, colleges or any other institutions 
and uh, provide hygiene education to children that is the correct hand washing technique the five steps of hand washing when we heard about the initiative and we were happy to give back to the community as much as possible we were one of the first hotel partners to jump on board पहले मैं घर पे रहते थे तो ये ताई लोग करती थी किसी के सामने हाथ ना फैलाना पड़े हम सबको भी लेडीज को फिर अभी हम लोग खाली महिला ही है तो फिर वो अच्छा लगता है अभी टाइम भी पास हो जाता है चार पैसे भी मिल जाते हैं हमको अच्छा लगता है जो हम लोग बच्चों को साबन देते जो हम लोग बनाते बच्चों को देते तो उनका वो स्माइल भी देखते तो उनको भी अच्छा लगता है और हमको भी अच्छा लगता है कि जैसा चलो अभी हम लोग बच्चों के लिए कुछ काम कर रहे करके help out a lot of children and give employment to people from the slums. We think this is an amazing initiative and this is a great way of practically solving problems in, in, a, mega, in a megapolis like Bombay. Well, several stories like that one, and in fact, uh, well, stories that you'll find perhaps a little more interesting with regard to uh, the start of the work week on the website BloombergQuint.com. Here are just a couple of them. The Committee of Creditors tasked with the resolution process of SR Steel has picked Arcelor Mittal uh, as uh, the preferred bidder for the insolvent asset. The final bid price will be negotiated over the weeks to come. The, and that's according to the Luxembourg-based company who said this in a statement. Now, the GST Council Secretariat has asked six states, including Delhi, Madhya Pradesh and Punjab, and the Union Territory of Puducherry to set up appellate authorities to enable aggrieved entities to file appeals against orders of the authority for advanced rulings. Well, that's all we have for you on this edition of All You Need to Know. Up next is Indian Open, so do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Quint. <laughs>